Number nine, what properties distinguish solids from liquids, liquids from gases, and solids from gases? All right, so to answer this question, I think the best way would be to draw a chart. So let's draw a three column chart. We got solids, we got liquids, and we have gases. And on the side, I'm going to put mass versus volume. Okay, so let's just do this nice here. Perfect. And I guess I'll draw this little line in here. That looks great, okay. And I can just bring this down, perfect. All right, so what I'm going to do here below is I'm gonna draw three beakers. Okay. Now, for solids, we just have to figure out what types of masses it contains and what types of volumes it contains. So if you think of any solid, a cube, a Lego, a Lincoln log, a calculator, anything that's in solid form, if I put that into a beaker, it's literally going to stay the same shape and have the same volume, no matter what the beaker is. So if I put it into a nice taller let's say that I put into a graduated cylinder now, it would still have the same shape and the same volume. We like to call that term definite. So solids have a definite mass, meaning that it does not change depending on what container it's put in. And since the volume does not change for solids, it would also have a definite volume as well. So for solids, it always will have, any solid will have a definite mass, a definite volume. It does not change given the container that it's in. Let's check, at, check out what liquids look like. So here I got some water in a beaker. Okay. Now if we weighed the beaker with the water, it would have a certain mass, right? And if we, you know, teared it and we were good scientists, we only got the mass of what the liquid was. Okay, perfect. Now I'm going to throw that into a graduated cylinder that's much taller. So what's going to happen to the volume of the liquid? It's actually going to rise. It's going to look different because of the shape of the container that it's in. However, the mass, if you weighed the graduated cylinder, the mass should be exactly the same. So for liquids, the mass is definite as well, because no matter what the um, container it is, it's the same amount of mass. However, the volume will change. Here, it looks like there's less water. This one, right? It has less water compared to this one. So this one is indefinite. That means that it changes in regards to what container it's in. Last but not least, we have gases. Now, gases are tricky because we can't see them at all. So they're all over the place, right? They're these little atoms and molecules that are bopping around all over the container, and we have no idea which direction they're going. They're colliding all over the place. So that can kind of give you a hint as to what's going to happen with the mass and the volume. Now, if we switch this to a large graduated cylinder... What's going to happen? Well, they're going to be hopping around all over the place as well. So is there a definite mass? In this case, no, there is not. So for this one, it's indefinite mass. And there's also, because it changes with whether you're in a beaker, a graduated cylinder, or a larger graduated cylinder, it would also be an indefinite mass amount of volume as well. So what properties distinguish solids from liquids? Well, here's the solids category. Here's the liquids category. Seems that their masses are definite, but volume would change. So solid for volume has a definite, I'm just going to hyphen it by DEF, versus liquids would be indefinite. Liquids from gases? Well, let's see. Liquids have a definite mass and an indefinite volume. What about gases? 
their masses change. It's indefinite versus definite, or sorry, versus, they're both indefinite. So what changed here? The mass. So liquids have a mass that's definite, and gases have a mass that is indefinite. So those are different. And then solids from gases. Solids are definite and definite for both mass and volume. Mass and volume. Gas is indefinite, indefinite for mass and volume. So they're completely different. So for mass, definite to indefinite. Volume, definite to indefinite. But hopefully you guys memorize this chart because this will help you out a lot. And that answered the question. All right, guys. Awesome job. Thanks for tuning in. Hope this helped. If it did, please press that subscribe button because we got tons of videos coming your way so you don't have to miss out on anything. And I'll see you all in the next lesson. Take care now. Bye.